Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk more about colour theory. So if you've seen my previous video about colour theory, that's talking about it more in general terms. Now I want to go into more depth on each section of colour theory. So today I'm going to talk all about my favourite colour combination and that's complementary or opposite colours. Not just what they are, but how you can make use of them in your paintings. If you like the video, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Also check me out over on Patreon for my full list of in-depth tutorials. But I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Firstly, I want to mention the fact that we're all taught the three primary colours are red, yellow and blue. Technically, this isn't accurate. The three primary colours from which every other colour in the spectrum can be mixed are cyan, magenta and yellow. This is something worth looking into if you have to mix your colours, so like with watercolours or oil paints. But because pastels come already mixed like this, you can see I've got a good full range of colour to work with. But it doesn't really take that many pastel sticks to give yourself a good range within the colour spectrum. But it's definitely something worth looking into if you are mixing your colours in other mediums. And because in this video we are just talking about opposite colours, wherever you are in the colour wheel, the colour opposite is always going to be the same. The contrast between two colours is most intense when you place two opposite colours next to each other. The two colours in their purest saturated form can be a bit much, but used in their tints can describe light and shade. But let's look at some examples where the colours are used both for dramatic effect and where you can start to use these colours in your work. I want to briefly mention an interesting use of opposite colours red and green. This is a colour perception test for red and green colour deficiencies. So obviously if you can't see red or green, you might not be able to see the number in the middle of this test. But the first couple of paintings that I want to look at using red and green predominantly in a dramatic way are the Arnolfini portrait and La Bercuse. You can see in both of these pieces that the red and green really hits you in the face. In Van Eyck's portrait in particular, he was using the colours red, green and that blue colour to show his clients wealth as those were particularly expensive dyes at the time to have for fabric. But it's no surprise that he's used so much green sitting against the red there, really grabs your attention. So both of these paintings using red and green dramatically bouncing off each other, not really to describe shape or form, light or shade. But you can use those colour opposites in a much more subtle way and that's what I try to do in my work to describe shape and form using the colour opposites. So with this piece you can see there's a lot of red bouncing around the piece so it instantly made me want to try and balance that with some green tints. In these progress images, you can see that I have literally used a really vibrant red colour as my base for the cushion. Now the cushion in reality is a cream cushion, but down one side of it you can see really vibrant red, and down the other side of it you can see quite a pale olive green to counter that. It really gives it the 3D effect, and also gives the illusion that all of that red fabric is bouncing its colour around the room. So although this isn't bright green and red in your face contrast, you can see that all of the light stone colours, um, all of the light beige colours that I've used, I've tried to choose ones with more of a hint of green to them. In people portraiture, you'll often find some green tones throughout the skin. Don't forget skin's really multi-layered, you're seeing a lot going on underneath the surface. In this piece in particular, I tried to use a lot of that minty green that you get from the shirt. A lot of that was getting reflected up onto his face. And I tried to counter that, in the lower layers especially, with some really vibrant red in the warmer areas, just to add a touch of warmth. 
but I find I really liked the contrast that this green and red give throughout the skin tones. There's another Californian-based artist who uses a pure green foundation on his skin tones. You should definitely check out his technique. It's a really amazing use of green to create realistic flesh tones. So blue and orange, possibly my favourite colour combo. Maybe the one that I end up using the most in my work. And we'll start with a Paul Klee. This is a bit more abstract. I often find that if I'm struggling with colour theory, trying to see something clearly, the best place to often look is in abstract world because if ever there's a place that they're going to make use of good colour theory, it's in the abstract world. So this piece in particular really reminds me actually of the next painting, Claude Monet's Impression Sunrise. And both of these paintings have that same impact with the orange sun gleaming out from the blue surroundings. So again, this is dramatic use of the opposite colours. But let's have a look at Lila Cabot Perry's painting from 1910. Again, another impressionist and a female artist. And I absolutely love this piece. Technically, I can find lots of yellow and lilac opposites in this piece as well, but what really jumps out at me are those orange highlights to her left side. There's clearly a fire lit just out of sight, and you can really see the glow that that creates on her outfit. So you've got the cool blue where the light is coming in from a window, and then on the opposite side of that, all of those orange highlights. And when you stand back from this, it really has that photographic look. But up close, it's such a riot of colour. And I especially love the little orange line trim just on the fireplace next to her face. Beautiful work, beautiful use of colour. This next artist is one of my very favourite artists at the moment working in pastel. I discovered Gigi's work through a fellow pastel artist, Gail Sibley's wonderful blog. I highly recommend checking out Gail's blog and I'll add some links in the description. But Gigi's work here is so colourful. You can see the slice across the painting that that big shadow at the top makes. And it's so clear if you're looking for colour theory here, it really hits you in the face. Just look at that sunlit part of the street, all those orange tones. Then step into the shadow and you're immediately in the cool blues and lilacs. And just out of interest, what colour is throughout the shadow of the red car? So an absolute riot of colour and expert handling of all of those colours in their most saturated forms. If this doesn't convince you to put some blue in your shadows, I don't know what will. So how do I make use of blue and orange contrast in my own work? In this painting of Portrush Harbour, you can see that it's predominantly blue, so much blue in this painting, and the lovely orange lifeboat really pops out nicely. But how else did I make use of orange to make this painting pop? When you have a good look up close, you can see lots of my little orange lines surrounding the buildings where they're being hit by the sun. Just adding a little glow down the buildings where they're catching the light. And it's completely purposeful that I chose a really vibrant orange colour to do that with. Something that would really sing against the deep blue sky. And when you step back from the painting, all of those little lines do add a liveliness or a 3D quality that wasn't there before. This is my Winter Stag series. And arguably here I've used as much yellow and lilac opposite use as I have with blue and orange. But I wanted to experiment with creating warm snowy tones. And you can see that I've also carried those blues and rich oranges through into the coats of the deer. Anywhere that the deer recedes into shadow, you can see I've brought loads of the blue that I've used in the surroundings into the fur. Anywhere that's really been hit by the sunlight, I'm making sure to use lots of those vibrant oranges from the background. So you can literally make use of the colour opposites within one patch of fur just to show the difference between light and shade.
So my first example for purple and yellow opposites is the Claude Monet water lilies. I always show a lot of impressionist work in my videos, but especially when I'm talking about colour theory, as it's always the place I go to when I'm struggling or when I need to see something more clearly. It's the impressionist's work that really opened my eyes to how you can use things like opposite or complementary colours. And with Monet's water lilies, I love the use of that rich, vibrant lilac in the water, and then with those punches of yellow on top in the flowers. Even the greens that he's used have a lot of yellow in them, making them pop really nicely against the deep violets. Here we have a Surat. I love his work for trying to figure out colour theory as he literally just puts the blobs of colour next to each other. In this piece in particular, have a look at the shirts of the workers, those white shirts. He's almost used something similar to my uh, Grey 27 that I use a lot of, which is a really light yellowy tint, not quite white. And then look at the shadows on the shirts, pure blue violet lilac colour. So that lovely colour contrast to give the idea again of light and shade. Then over to Van Gogh's irises. A great example of using that punch of colour to make big impact, something he was so good at. But for an impressionist who used colour in a slightly more subtle way, let's have a look at Mary Cassatt, one of my favourite impressionist painters. And in this piece, a bit like in Serrat's piece, you can see how she's created the whites using those shadow tones, those light lilacs. All those lovely tints that I love to use for my pastel collection. So all the purples and yellows here are used in their very lightest tints to describe the form so beautifully, especially of the little girl's dress. So how have I managed to bring some yellow and purple into my own work? Again, it's more subtle and I make use of the lighter tints when I'm trying to describe light and shade. So in Archie's coat here, for example, you can see that it's got a lot of yellow glow to it. So anywhere that that fur recedes into a shadowed area, my highlight colour changes into a light lilac as opposed to the really light yellow. And that's how I create the 3D look with the light and shade. It's all about your colour choices. And similarly for these schnauzers, even though they're just grey dogs, you can see how much colour is actually in their portrait. So I'm never looking for just grey. It'll be grey with a hint of purple to it, grey with more blue in it, some grey with yellow in it. So I'm always looking for those tints as my shading colours. And that's where you can really start to use the opposite colours in a more subtle way, especially if you're trying to paint photorealistically. I hope you find this helpful. Colour theory is a huge topic and I've only just broke the surface of it here so I'll come back and make more videos about colour theory again really soon. If you want to help me keep doing that, please do subscribe here on YouTube. You'll get access to all my new free content and also consider checking me out over on Patreon as you can help me make lots more of this content in future. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.